If you have ever found yourself wondering, why is the skin on my face so much darker compared to the rest of my body? This is the video for you. For the most part, this is actually pretty normal. And in the majority of cases, we can just chalk it up to the fact that our face is a lot more exposed to, well, the sun and ultraviolet radiation from the sun leads to reactive oxygen species in our skin. The skin cells, melanocytes, respond to this by producing melanin pigment that makes the skin more pigmented. That melanin pigment is intended to protect the DNA of your surrounding skin cells from DNA damage from ultraviolet radiation. Facial skin is also a lot more exposed to other environmental aggressors like infrared radiation and pollution that may generate inflammation in the skin and drive more hyperpigmentation. But outside of this more obvious, well, it's just more exposed territory, it's important to understand that there are many skin conditions that lead to hyperpigmentation on the face. Probably one of the more common ones, one that you may be familiar with, is melasma. Melasma is an acquired hyperpigmentation that most often affects the face, both sides of the face, but it also can happen on the neck and the upper chest. And it is often triggered by UV exposure from the sun, as well as hormones, specifically estrogen. So it commonly presents for the first time in pregnancy. It also could be triggered by hormonal birth control pills, topical estrogens, and it's also driven by exposures to heat, as well as irritation from things that you put on your skin, like different cosmetics can really aggravate it. Visible light from the sun in the blue light wavelengths is also a big driving factor. Now, if you have melasma, you need to check out my Melasma 101 video. I go into so many details in that video all about the different types of treatments for melasma and things to avoid, things to be careful with. And of course, sun protection is paramount there. Outside of melasma, there is also something called post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation. This is a lot more common in people who have deeper skin tones. And basically, just as the name implies, anytime you have anything in the skin that is inflammatory, whether it be acne, seborrheic dermatitis, rosacea, that can leave behind hyperpigmentation. In some cases, it also can take away some of your pigment and leave behind hypopigmentation. Or sometimes you can have a mixture of both things going on at one time, hyper and hypo, as a result, of inflammation from skin conditions. And the severity and extent and persistence of that hyperpigmentation is dependent on the overall extent and severity of the inflammatory issue that triggered it, as well as how long that inflammatory condition went untreated, unchecked. So in order to get rid of this condition, treating the underlying cause is paramount. And then with time, it often will slowly resolve. And of course, there are topical treatments, which I've covered on my channel before that can help improve it. Again, check out my videos on hyperpigmentation because today's video, we don't have time to go into detail regarding how each and every one of these issues is treated. Very rarely, people can develop a photoallergic contact dermatitis to something they are putting on their face. And what this means is you become allergic to an ingredient in say a makeup product or a skincare product. That's called a pigmented contact dermatitis or Riel's melanosis because it leads to hyperpigmentation. It might be confused with melasma. Common culprits include fragrances. But one very common reason for apparent hyperpigmentation on the face, especially in people of Asian descent, African descent, that is something called pigmentary demarcation lines. Now, these can happen on the body. They also can happen on the face. They are actually perfectly normal. And as the name implies, demarcation lines, it looks like you have this line of demarcation between uh, your background skin tone and then this area of more pigment. For example, you'll often see them on the backs of the legs. You'll see a line going down, someone with a deeper skin tone, that's a pigmentary demarcation line. It has to do with how the pigment cells, when we are developing as embryos, when we are an embryo, how these pigment cells go from where they originate and make their way to the skin. Um, and so there, there is a line of demarcation there. They also can happen on the face. And they happen on the face in a few specific locations most often. One is this sort of V-like shape 
um, extending from the temple to the mound of the cheek. Sometimes it can look like a W. And in some cases, these pigmentary demarcation lines can also extend to the eyelid skin. It might be a reason why you have hyperpigmentation around the eyes, dark circles, dark eyelids. You also can have a pigmentary demarcation line extending from the corner of the mouth down to the chin. I mentioned this and review it in my video all about hyperpigmentation around the mouth. So that is perfectly normal. And it's important that these conditions be recognized and explained to you if that is what you're dealing with because there's really not a topical cream or lotion that you can pursue that is going to get rid of these. They're sort of just part of your skin's makeup. Speaking of things that you might be born with, um, one of them is actually a type of birthmark that happens on the face called Nevis of Oda. Nevis of Oda presents with this like bluish, grayish pigmentation. And it's an interesting type of birthmark essentially in that as I explained earlier, you know, when you're, a you're, when you're an embryo and you're developing, the melanocytes, the pigment producing cells, they originate in one location and then they have to migrate into your skin. They migrate into your skin where they're supposed to take up shop right um, at the very bottom layer of your epidermis. But sometimes as they're migrating there, a few of them get stuck in the dermis and then they just live in the dermis, the deeper layers of the skin moving forward and because they're stuck there what you end up seeing with your eyes is this bluish hyper type of hyperpigmentation because of light scattering it's called the Tyndall effect but this commonly happens on just on one side of the face it's basically a type of birthmark and it can extend to involve your eye this is often present at birth but becomes a lot more noticeable once you go through puberty because again hormones influence pigment production and it tends to be a lot more common in women compared to men importantly when it involves your eye you need to have regular eye exams because there is a slightly increased risk of increased intraocular pressure in the eye with this condition and glaucoma and very very rarely you can develop melanoma as a result of this but that is not very common but is something that is important to keep in mind as a potential risk factor there is another very similar appearing condition called Hori's nevis it looks similar to nevis of oda except it happens on both sides of the face and in contrast to nevis of oda Hori's nevis is not present when you're at birth. It's something that appears usually in your 30s. And it's the same type of condition where you have pigment cells down deeper in the skin. It doesn't affect the eyes like nevis of Oda. Sometimes it can involve the forehead and the upper eyelids. This is acquired. It's not something you're born with. And it is a lot more common in women. Hori's nevis is something that can potentially be misdiagnosed as melasma because it's acquired like melasma is. It appears in your 30s when a lot of women develop melasma for the first time. It looks kind of like melasma, but it's not. And so it's really important that you see a dermatologist rather than just assuming you have one thing because a proper diagnosis is key because, you know, with melasma, um, we have treatments that we pursue, which are just not going to be effective for Hori's nevis. It's also important to know that you have Hori's nevis because in contrast to melasma, Hori's nevis or nevis of, of Oda, if you were born with, with this type of pigmentation. These are not things that are caused by or exacerbated by the sun. Then there are a variety of um, just sort of unusual, relatively uncommon skin conditions, which I actually have videos on on this channel. One of them is called commonly referred to as ashy dermatosis. The proper terminology for it is erythema dyschronicum pursed hands. I told you guys this the other day, but in dermatology, we love to give things these long convoluted names. EDP or ashy dermatosis. I have a video all about this. If you have a diagnosis of ashy dermatosis, I want you to watch that video because I give a lot of information on the types of treatments, what it looks like. For the most part, this is an acquired type of hyperpigmentation where you get these oval dark spots. When it first is erupting, actually, the spots have a uh, red raised edge to them. Very important feature, which oftentimes, unfortunately, can be missed because it sort of appears 
you know, kind of slowly, very rarely can happen on the face. So it's just something important to keep in the back of your mind as a potential reason. Um, again, it's, it's not a super common condition, let alone on the face. It happens a lot more commonly on the torso. Um, actually, one of the most effective treatments, if you're able to tolerate it, is an oral medication called clothazamine. So check out my video on Ashley Dermatosis because I talk about that uh, medication there. Then kind of very similar in appearance to Ashley Dermatosis is a variant of lichen planus. So lichen planus is an inflammatory skin condition where you get these patches of um, sort of uh, purplish discoloration with this overlying sort of lacy scale. But there's a variant of it called lichen planus pigmentosus where you don't have sort of subtly raised patches with lacy scale, but rather you just have flat pigmentation. It's called lichen planus pigmentosus. And it's not a really common condition, but it, you know, it's often undiagnosed, misdiagnosed, happens, you know, a lot of times it'll appear like on the sides of the face. I've seen many cases like that. Um, so again, this is this is one of the many reasons why if you're dealing with a skin condition like hyperpigmentation on the face, it's so important to see a dermatologist to get an accurate diagnosis so that A, you don't waste your time on things that are ineffective and B, you also are not, you know, putting unnecessary things on your skin that could end up causing irritation and then triggering post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation on top of you know, something like lichen planus pigmentosis. This is a condition that is is actually pretty common on the face. You hear about it a lot under the arms and the sides of the neck. It's called acanthosis nigricans. It is a manifestation of insulin resistance. And basically, it's not a hyperpigmentation, truly. It's, it's not anything to do with the pigment-producing cells, melanocytes. It's not a, a melanin-centric uh, issue, but rather a hyperproliferative issue where the keratinocytes, um, you know, hyperproliferate. And so you get kind of thickening of the skin. You get these velvety brown um, plaques, as they're called, they're raised. Um, and it looks like kind of this velvety stuff. It, it, you know, like I said, you hear about it occurring under the arms and the sides of the neck, but it very commonly happens on the sides of the face as well. And if you're not savvy at what it looks like, you could easily misdiagnose someone as having melasma um, because it can sometimes happen in a similar area. It also can happen on the forehead. So I have a, I, I have a video all about acanthosis nigricans where I really do a deep dive on all the different treatment options, but Paramount is addressing the underlying insulin resistance issue. That is, that is key, as well as weight management if the person has obesity, um, you know, because that kind of goes hand in hand with the insulin resistance piece of things. And so managing those conditions can halt the prog progression. In some cases, you can get resolution. Then it's important to consider medications. Uh, you have to think about something called exogenous ochronosis, which is rare, but it's definitely worth mentioning. And that comes from um, excessive, unmonitored, unchecked usage of a high uh, concentration of hydroquinone. Now, hydroquinone is a topical uh, skin bleaching agent used to treat many different types of hyperpigmentation. It's a safe and effective treatment, but um, you know, patients who use it uh, without doctor supervision, especially a high concentration or a high concentration that's admixed with potent steroids, they can get this disfiguring skin condition. It's called, called um, exogenous ochronosis because exogenous means happens from the outside. Um, there's also endogenous ochronosis, which is uh, a, a genetic disease called alcaptonuria, but I digress. So exogenous ochronosis is a you know, a fairly rare complication of hydroquinone use where you get um, hyperpigmentation where you're applying the hydroquinone, so like usually on the cheeks. And you, if you look very closely, it's described as having um, this sort of uh, sooty uh, little dots of hyperpigmentation admixed throughout it. It can be very disfiguring and it's very difficult to treat. Stopping the hydroquinone is key. Check out my video all about stopping hydroquinone. I go into detail about uh, exogenous ochronosis in that video. 
For everything I'm mentioning here, I pretty much have a video that goes into more detail. Along the lines of medication, so that's something that you put on the skin. Of course, anything you put on the skin that would cause you, your, your skin irritation could certainly cause post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation, which we already talked about. But there are also medications that you might take by mouth whose side effect profile includes hyperpigmentation that might manifest on your face. One of those is a medication people might take for their heart called amio. Amiodarone. Amiodarone is well established to cause a blue gray discoloration in sun exposed areas. So not just your face, but also like your forearms, the backs of your hands. Chlorpromazine is another medication that can cause a very similar type of hyperpigmentation in sun exposed areas. Minocycline is a medication that is part of the class called tetracycline antibiotics. It can be used in dermatology to treat things like acne, rosacea. The oral minocycline can cause a few different types of hyperpigmentation actually and sometimes that can involve the face um, it can involve uh, a bluish discoloration of any scars that you might have so if you have acne scars and you're on minocycline for a prolonged period of time it's possible that you develop this hyperpigmentation within the acne scars hydroxychloroquine um, otherwise known as Plaquenil this is a medication um, that we use to treat lupus um, we also use it to treat like in planus, but um, it can have a side effect of hyperpigmentation. So that's, you know, if you are on this medication, that's why it's important to follow up with your doctor regularly to monitor for side effects. Um, it can cause a sort of yellowish brown hyperpigmentation or even a bluish gray pigmentation in sun exposed areas like the face, the forearms, and the backs of the hands. Um, also the neck, the lower extremities. All right, y'all. So those are a handful of possible common and not so common reasons why the skin on your face might be darker than the skin on the rest of your body. Uh, for the most part, it's actually pretty normal to have slightly tanner face compared to the rest of your body. But in some cases, especially, you know, where it's obvious hyperpigmentation, it might be related to an underlying skin condition. So if you're not sure what you're dealing with, it's so important to see a board certified dermatologist to get an accurate diagnosis. Um, it's key. It's key to know what you're dealing with and how best to approach it. Now, if you have an accurate diagnosis and you want to learn more about treatment options, check out my videos. Because like I said, I have a video deep diving into melasma, deep diving into ingredients for hyperpigmentation, deep diving into acanthosis nigricans, ashy dermatosis, lichen planus, you name it. I have a lot of videos on my channel about different skin conditions. Just search Dr. Dre, whatever it is you are curious about, and video likely will pop up. I have been putting out a video every day for close to eight years now. So there's a good chance there's a video on it. And if not, let me know in the comments to make a video and I will put it on my list. Anyways, guys, I hope this this video was informative, educational, and that you enjoyed it. If so, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye!